this video, we will be restoring an Austro-Hungarian M17 helmet into a World War II transitional Wehrmacht helmet. Someone decided to paint this helmet in this awful looking green color. There is almost no original paint left. The helmet has some rust damage. It has some bad pitting. So the first thing we're going to do is fill these holes up. Alright, so the biggest holes are now filled up. As you can see, all around the helmet. Also on the inside. Okay, time to wash it off now. All right, so as you can see at this moment, um, I've been hand painting the helmet. Uh, this is not gonna be the final color, of course. This is just the idea of the World War I paint still being underneath the World War II paint because of course it's going to be a World War II reissued helmet so I thought it would be cool if it actually had multiple layers of paint underneath the World War II paint so we have the idea that the original paint is still under there so the color of this doesn't really matter um, I'm just gonna give it some more brush uh, strokes and um, then I will be waiting for the paint to arrive from France the World War II German Feldkrau paint and uh, then we will go further with that but for now um, I'm gonna paint this helmet a little bit more with the hand. Alright so if we look at the helmet like this it actually looks really good and of course right now you're asking why would you have this paint underneath it while you're not seeing it well it's more like when you're using the helmet it's getting a lot of scratches and stuff and uh, if you get scratches you will see the different layers of paint and I think that's the cool thing about it. And uh, of course, at some spots, you will also see the brush strokes underneath it. So yeah, I think that's just a really cool thing. All right, so we just finished uh, painting this helmet. And as you can see, it looks really nice right now. Really looks like a World War I helmet. I mean, it is a World War I helmet, but the colors are perfect. But again, we're not going to keep these colors, we're going to paint it again. Alright, so as you can see, it's been painted once again, or actually a couple times. Uh, now there is a green layer over the other layers. Now we're going to wait for the Feldgrau to arrive. That's going to be the exact color as the German World War II helmets uh, with texture. Can't wait, but uh, yeah, just ordered it yesterday, so it's going to take a while, <laughs> probably. It can take a week, it can take a couple weeks, depends. But yeah, there's not really more we can do right now at this moment. This is what it is, and uh, now we just have to be patient and uh, wait for the paint to arrive. Also, I ordered a liner and split pins yesterday, and I actually already got those today. So that was really, really fast. But again, I can't do anything right now. First, we have to spray it again before we can move on. But so far, I'm really happy with the result. All right, a perfect day. The sun is shining, and... Uh, the paint and decal arrived today. So, let's uh, get right into it. Okay, we're gonna start with the inside of the helmet. And of course, I'm wearing a mask because I do not want Feldkrau with texture on the inside of my lungs. Historically correct lungs. Here we go. This always smells like, whoops. Oh, that's irritating with the, uh, Texture. Now I have to wait. See? Yeah, that's that's the thing I hate about this. Probably need a needle for that. So the texture is blocking this right here. So I guess we have to wait for a couple minutes. Okay, I think we are ready to spray again. Nope. Looks like we have to get a needle. Okay, just got a needle. This is so annoying. Looks like it's working though. That works. Yep. It does. Okay, let's continue our work. 
What the? Oh, this is so annoying. I just want to spray. Come on. This is the only thing I hate with textured paint. I think we are ready to do it again. No, we're not. Come on. This is really, really annoying. Let me turn that around a little bit. Hopefully we can finally spray again because I'm not just standing here for fun. This is, this is starting to get really irritating. Paint is already dry. There we go. Finally. And of course, we have to wait again. Okay, here we go. Finally. I want to spray for at least 10 seconds. Ah, still spraying so far. <clears throat> this smells like candy. This looks extremely nice. Now we're gonna let this dry, and after that we will uh, apply another coat of paint. But of course, we should not forget about these split pins. Here we have our split pins. Like I've been showing in other videos as well, I always use cardboard for uh, spraying the split pins. Just push them in the cardboard like that. So we'll be really easy. There you go. That's good. Maybe the sides a little bit more. Yep, that looks pretty nice. So the helmet is drying right now, but it looks really nice already. And you see what I mean? You can still see that from the brush right there. And that is really cool. You see that a lot with original helmets. Okay, so of course the paint is not dry yet, but I can touch it right now. So what I can do now is spray the inside again. This paint dries really fast, which is really nice, of course. I'm gonna put down this, so it's not gonna damage. Now the tables are turned. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to do the split pins one more time. Now we're going to let it dry and then the next step will be installing the liner. Alright, so the helmet is dry right now. So we can install the liner. It's a uh, early M31 liner with the uh, square buckles, as you can see. So this one is made from aluminum. It's nicely marked with Deutsches Reichspatent and 1938. So it's gonna be head size 59 for a 66 helmet shell. That looks really nice. Look at that. That's gonna be perfect. We want this liner to be nice and tight. We're gonna start with the split pin on the back. Here we have these split pins. Take them out and they look really nice as you can see. You can see the texture on them. So I'm gonna push this through. All right, so it's really nice and tight. There's no movement at all. I couldn't film it because it's pretty hard to do it right here. This liner is pretty tight. So I just did it right there sitting on the bed because uh, it's pretty hard to do it like this for the camera and I don't wanna screw it up. So I'm gonna do these two right now and I will show you when it's done. Just finished installing the liner. As you can see, the split pins are now nice and tight right there, right there, and right there. And here we have the liner. Uh, of course, we still need the liner rope. This liner came together with this rope, but this is a pretty incorrect rope, so I'm not gonna use that one. I have my own ropes, but so far, I'm really, really happy. It looks really nice. So let's get a small rope for this helmet. Let's get the bubble wrap again. And we just go from the bottom to the top. Just like that. And then continue this way. There we go. That looks really nice. Let's put it on my head. Still no decal, of course, but uh, nice. Fits perfect. And of course, we also still need a tin strap. But yeah, that's gonna be later. Old house.
All right, today is the day we are going to apply the decal. And of course, that's gonna be on this side of the helmet. Um, here we have the decal, the correct type for a reissued helmet, high quality. Um, and of course, we have two brushes. We have the glue, pure turpentine. Um, this, for in case uh, something goes wrong, you never know. Some cloth and water. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to put the decal in the water for at least 30 seconds. That is some really high quality right there. When we put this in the water, there is no turning back. So there we go, at least 30 seconds. It's been 30 seconds. So what we're going to do right now is we are going to put the decal on a piece of cloth. I'm going to place it right there. At the same time, we will get this glue. Here we got a brush. And I'm gonna apply this glue right here. Here we go. And also very important, um, get the lid of a can so you know when the glue will be ready. There we go. So now all we have to do is wait until this glue gets sticky and be sure to put the decal on the right side of the helmet. Even though in World War II it went wrong as well, but we're not planning to do that. Nope, still not sticky. Let's check it again. Yes, it's getting sticky. We wait for a couple more minutes. Okay, I have the feeling it's gonna be ready now. Oh yes, yes, you see that? If this happens, it's definitely gonna be ready. Okay, so it's time for some action. The first thing we're gonna do is see if the decal is ready. And it is because you can move it around. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make this wet. You want this to be really wet. Don't be afraid to put a lot of water on it. This will help you to adjust uh, the decal when it goes wrong. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to apply it. And this is always the scariest part, but don't be scared because if you're getting scared, it's going wrong 100%. So don't be scared, just hold your finger on it like that. I like to make my thumb wet before I do it. Hold it right there. This, this looks perfect. And then pull like that. Be really careful. And see, this is why I have the needle. So we can do this. If it goes wrong, we can adjust it a little bit. There we go. Just push it up. And there we go. That's why I have the needle. Be sure to get rid of all these air bubbles. That is really important. And don't push too hard on it. Be really careful. It's really easy to damage the decal. And you really don't want that. Okay, here we go. Decal has been applied. So the next step will be remove the excess glue with pure turpentine. So that's what we're gonna do. Here we got a clean brush. And we're gonna do this. Pure turpentine. Get rid of all this glue because the glue is now, of course, underneath the decal, where it should be. You don't want this glue to be here. So that's what we are removing right now. Again, be really careful. And right now, we're gonna clean it with a soft piece of cloth. Don't push on the decal. Okay, this is looking very, very nice right now. I am really happy. Phew, everything went according to plan. So now do not touch it anymore. I mean, you can touch it like this, but be really careful, don't touch it. It will actually take weeks before the decal is completely hardened out. So um, don't do anything with the decal. Just keep it like it is right now. Put it on a shelf or whatever. Don't use it for reenacting straight away. Um, just keep it like this. Wow, of course we still need the chin strap, but uh, the restoration is successful so far. Take a look at that. That looks absolutely perfect. That's a high quality decal right there. Okay, so I still had a chin strap upstairs, so let's do that right now as well. Let's start with the small one first. There we go. And now the other one. And there we go. We have our chin strap. 
and there were so many different types of liners used in these helmets. Um, just the standard M31 liner, the, the, the early one made from aluminum, the later ones made from iron or from zinc, and a lot of them actually kept the uh, World War I liner in there. So you can find these helmets with World War I liners and World War II decals. And of course, the helmet looks brand new right now, but I'm not gonna age the helmet because uh, I want a helmet like this uh, to age naturally. I want to actually use it for reenacting, um, so the scratches will come by itself. But for now, I'm really happy with the result of this restoration.